Bill, if I mention this to you, and if I mention to all of you out there, okay, I'm going to give you a list of names. All right, let me, let's, you know, you tell me what comes to mind when I give you this list of names, right? And if you want to chime in, you can chime in on the YouTube chat board. If you're watching, you can chime in on the accidentlawfirm.com text line, 786 322 1105, as always. So, Bill, Bill Parcells, Mike Holmgren, Bill. Don Shula, Dick Vermeil. What what comes to mind when I give you those names? Winners, Super Bowl. Okay. Anything else? Well, when you said Parcell, uh, Dallas. Parcells. Uh, taking away the stars. Taking away the star when he went to Dallas. Uh, what does that have to do with all the other guys? No, no, no. When you said Parcell, you said what's the first thing? Now you no, started. No, I'm talking about the names. Then, then you started don't going, don't go oh. into another tent. I'm not, that's not what I'm asking. What? It's win. I, I give you that. So you got Super Bowl win, right? Yeah. Okay. Winners get along with their team, good teams, teams prepared. All right. Would you call them all Hall of Famers? Dick Vermeil, Shula, Holmgren, and Parcells. Of course, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. No doubt. Okay. You know, Andy Reid joined those guys. Hands down. Well, he was already there, but that just but not solidified. A, but not what I'm talking about. Well, that's Cause, Super Bowl. Because I'm, st- I'm still keeping you in the dark right now. All five of these gentlemen lost the Super Bowl and then won it with another team. Dick Vermeil lost in Philly, won in St. Louis. Raiders, Andy the first Reed, wild card team, yeah. Andy Reid lost in Philly, won in KC. Shula lost in Baltimore, won in Miami. Holmgren won in Green Bay, lost in Seattle. Parcells won with the Giants, lost with the Patriots. And and it shows you the greatness because if there's any doubts still left about Andy Reid. You know, last night I was sitting there going, you know, Andy is in in a in an interesting company because he lost the Super Bowl with one team and won it with another. And so I said, let me go through the history cuz I started writing guys down and I left Holmgren out. I couldn't think of it, so I went to the list. Hey, I'm 53, bro. I'm not going to remember everything. So I went to the list, and I found Holmgren also. I remembered all the other ones. So I, I thought I did all right, actually. So I remembered Holmgren. I put it to the list, and I'm looking at this list, and I'm going, there aren't a lot of guys that have taken two different teams to the Super Bowl, okay? And the fact that and, – and, and in all these cases, they lost it with one team and won it with another, you know, which shows you the greatness of Andy Reid because – if you want to question Holmgren or you want to question Shula, you want to question Dick Vermeil or Parcells, I don't think we are, right? And there has been that question about Andy Reid. And I thought, you know, that is some special company to be in because Dick Vermeil was a hell of a coach, man. You know, I'm old enough that I saw his run in Philly. That was one of the great defenses of all time, man. That was one bad-ass defense in those days, okay? I mean, just a great, great Buddy Ryan defense before Buddy then went to Chicago and joined Mike Ditka to then win the they title. They supplanted the Cowboys teams that were awesome. Wilbert Montgomery, no, defense, Errol Carmichael. Uh, they, they, they had, they had, a, had a nice a, little team, man. They had a fun offense, but that defense was oh. special. Bill okay? was a, a master. Joyner, Reggie master. White and all those cats. Yeah, man. Crazy, crazy defense. And, uh, you know, Shula, obviously, with Unitas, it came up short in Baltimore and then obviously built the Miami teams, and the rest is history with Shula. I don't need to defend him. Uh, Holmgren, same thing. Great San, great uh, Green Bay team. And then goes to Seattle and builds up another team that gets to the Super Bowl with Matt Hasselback, and they fall short. And then, obviously, Parcells had those great giant teams. And then built up the Patriots to the point where they got to the Super Bowl. They just couldn't get over the hump. But, okay, you still got to the Super Bowl again 
with another team, which again, to me, uh, it, it's just, it, it's, it's special company. You know what I mean? It's not the names that are there, these five names during the Super Bowl era. Okay. I, I didn't go back to the NFL championships and all that stuff. I, you know, I'm sure there are more names that we added back in time, but I went with modern day NFL. Okay. From on and those five names, you know, that's, that's special company that Andy Reid stepped into, and it shows you, I just in case if anybody was kind of questioning it, you know, the history of the game, there, there aren't a lot of people that can take two different teams to the Super Bowl. You know, that's, that's one hell of an accomplishment when you're able to do that. And uh, on the flip side, by the way, um, John Fox lost in Denver and lost in Carolina. Okay. There's another guy. Now but but see, do you put John Fox with those guys? Really good coach, solid coach, but no. Right? That's what yeah. I'm saying. You you've got to somehow you've got to somehow win, you know, uh you got to somehow to win to get over that hump. Yeah. Uh, no, to be with these guys. Well, yeah. I mean, but I don't. But I don't even put John. Even if he got a Super Bowl, right? You know what I mean? So uh, yeah, the conservative, yeah. boring ass way he coaches. He coaches scared. I think at times is what he does. It's a, oh, running game, punting, and uh, defense. That's it. That's that's John Fox. Running game, punting, and defense. Anyway, um, but there's you, one more guy that yeah. that took two different teams and Go never ahead. won. Dan Reeves. Yes, I, Atlanta and Denver. Yep. Yes, and then Mike Shanahan, right? Won twice with Denver, but Kyle Shanahan has lost twice with Atlanta. The and, scales evened out. Dad's yeah. got two positives. Right. He's got two negatives. I was going to get to the 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 other side of the coin with those other guys uh, there. You know what I mean? Because remember, Shanahan had the Raiders and also Washington, but he never got to a Super Bowl with any of those teams. With Denver, obviously, had those two great Denver teams that won the back-to-back championships. Terrell Davis. Yeah, but it shows you how special it is for a coach to get there with two with two different teams, but the ones that have busted through to win at least with one of those two, it shows you how special this group is right here. And Andy Reid, by winning on Sunday, stepped in to that company with Dick Vermeil, Shula Holmgren, and Bill Parcells. It's pretty good stuff, man. You know what else it says, though? If you lose the Super Bowl, you know what I mean? It's it's not a knock on you. Look at that list, okay? Right. Well, as long as you can come back and win one. Right. You don't want to be – we've talked about it the last couple days. You don't want to be John Fox. You don't want to be the guy that, yeah. You don't want to be John Fox. And uh, uh, what do they call it? Bridesmaid, never a bride? Right. John (laughs) Fox is that guy that – like, you never can call John Fox a bad coach. It's, that would be stupid on your part. That would be insulting. But he's not a championship coach. You know what I mean? Because he's won in different places. He's been productive. He's been a really good assistant coach, too, uh, as, a, as a coordinator. And, and so he, the guy's had success, but you never look at him like the elite coaches. You always said, yeah, solid coach, but... You know, I think we can do better. You know, it's uh, that's that's how John Fox is. Like, not he's not, you know, Cam Cameron like. He's not Adam Gase. Okay, let's not insult him that way. I'm gonna equivalent it. You know what I'm saying? So you talking about there's a coach that, like, on the rebuild starts your rebuild. He takes you to a certain level. Amen. And then there's a guy that comes in and finishes, and finishes the, the job. Deal. It's the guy that's got the goods to put you over the top. And and Andy Reid wasn't considered that guy until Sunday that finally a lot of people, I'm not one of them, I've always put Andy Reid in an elite area. I've always been a big Andy Reid supporter. Uh, I've never been the guy Andy Reid, but no, I've never been that. Because it just, you look at it, the guy, you know, I, I didn't realize the number is 10 head coaches. Look at the tree of coaches that he has. I, I didn't know it was 10. It's a man. He just read that. Is ten that, guys? Is that more than Walsh? Is that more than Bill Walsh? I don't think anybody's done ten ever. I don't even think I, Bill Walsh did it. I think that's it. a safe assumption. I mean, I don't think Lombardi did it. 
I don't, I don't think anybody's done 10. That's a lot, man. Dude, that's a lot You're of people that have become head coaches a under you, third, bro. A third of the league. I mean, that's that's nuts, bro. No, you're over a third because it's you. You're 11. So, so yeah. I mean, that's I, – I, I don't even get that. That's crazy. So, this is a guy that was very Rodney Dangerfield, was not getting the respect he deserves. And so, yesterday I was just having some fun. I'm thinking, you know, what's this whole thing? He's won one and lost one with two different teams – where does he stand? And when I brought out that list, I was like, whoa, that's a list. That's a list right there, man. That's an elite list of guys right there that if any of those five guys are your head coach, you're all right. You're doing all right. you got no problem uh, overall. Just make sure you don't hire Parcells to run your football operations at this point in time because he's not really interested in that. But uh, coaching... That's a whole different ball game. I think you're better than all right, you know. Oh no, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm being facetious. I'm just, you know, throwing it out there. Everybody's to... looking at you like, oh, they got that coach, man. Yeah, they got that coach. Yeah, exactly. That's the way you're looking at it. There's no doubt. None of these teams were complaining when they had that coach because they had a hell of a coach overall. The Andy Reid thing kind of died out in Philadelphia because it was so long. So it gets to a point where. You know, outside of marriages, right, and and it still happens in a lot of marriages that you, you know, you kind of fall out of love or whatever it is, and you kind of lose interest in people. But more often than not, you hope that, you know, the person you marry, you're able to stay with them forever, uh, right? Because that's kind of the plan. But everything else in life, there is time for change sometimes, whether it's your job, whether whatever it is, different things that you just a habit that you normally do, uh, some kind of a routine, whatever it is, you like to change after a certain amount of time, you know, and it kind of wears out. And sometimes the, the voice gets stale. And that happened to Andy Reid in Philadelphia. But then he goes to Kansas City and, you know, the rest is history. Good for him, man. I was going to say, you, you pointed it out in the past, like, a coach being there 10, 12 years, does the speech have the same impact? It gets worn and stale, right, right. and it doesn't in, stir emotions like no. it used to, you know? And no. it, I, it, I always thought, no, man, you want – look at Shula. Look how long he was there. But, but it makes sense, especially in today's world, oh, yeah. the way the players are. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I t- you're, you are absolutely right. No, and now, and now your attention span is so much shorter now uh, in general with people. Uh, it's just one of those things that we kind of have to live with. You know it. I mean, I don't, I'm not telling any of you out there anything you don't deal with on an everyday basis. It's, it's just a, a different way of thinking nowadays, right? And so there's always change that's going to happen. And I, I just, you know, wanted to bring it up because I thought it was a really cool stat and a really cool group that Andy Reid ends up joining by winning that Super Bowl and proving his greatness, not just with the impact he's made with his coaches and players, but by taking two different teams to the Super Bowl and winning one out of those two. I just wanted to show you the elite company he is in because all these gentlemen can never be questioned as great head coaches and they all lost the Super Bowl. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they'll be the guy, yeah, but Andy didn't get it done in Philly. Okay, Shula didn't do it, get it done in Baltimore. And Dick Vermeil didn't get it done in Philadelphia. And Parcells didn't get it done in New England. So what's your point? You know what I mean? When somebody ever tells you that, you got the ammo now that you could say, well, hey, 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 hey. Holmgren lost in Seattle, but he won in Green Bay. What's your problem? Lots of great coaches fail in the Super Bowl. Lots of Hall of Fame coaches fail in the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? And so now Andy joined company in two different ways. He joined a group of great head coaches, Hall of Fame head coaches that lost in the Super Bowl. And now he joins all the other Hall of Fame coaches that have won in the Super Bowl. It's pretty cool. I'm going to say this. If there was anybody 
that needed Andy Reid to solidify his legacy and everything to win that Super Bowl. And it does put him over the top. But seriously, if you didn't think he was a good coach, if you didn't think – A great like, coach. Great yeah, coach. Awesome. Hall of Amazing. Fame. Amazing. First, first ballot. ballot. Yes. Yeah. And he might have not have gotten in for the first ballot, dude. If he doesn't have that championship, he gets in. Because there's a stigma. It's like an Eli Manning thing. He probably won't get in first ballot, but he'll get in. Eventually. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like second or third shot, and that's what would have happened to Andy Reid. He would have gotten in on the second or third shot because it would have gone but. Now with the championship and everything else, it's like, okay. All those closed doors are blasted it's done. open. There, yeah. you can't, no question. There's no question anymore. First but, ballot, let him in. You know, he deserves to get in there. Just if you didn't think he was great before, you need to do some more research and read up and more study. It's all about John Travolta, baby. Let him in. Just let him in.